Well, I want to share with you today, a couple of weeks ago, uh, myself and my wife, Danny and Sharon over here, and Clint and Rose, there they are, we all decided to purchase tickets to go to a, a deal called the October Roundup. I spoke to you last week about it up in uh, Winsboro, the city of Winsboro, and, uh, which was a gathering of uh, cowboy poets and musicians. And the true purpose was to celebrate the rich culture of the, the cowboys and their lives throughout poetry, music, and art. And, and it was. It, it was a... Uh, we got, we got up, well, I think we left, what, about 10 o'clock, something like that, headed up there, and uh, the event was supposed to be from 9 a.m. to 9.30 p.m., actually at night. We thought it was a little earlier, and it's a two-hour drive to Winsboro. We left our homes around 10, and with the expectations of a day filled with all kinds of cowboy activities, that was our expectation from the brochure we received and the things that we read about and all. So we had high expectations when we got there, or as we began to travel, and like I say, it was, it was two hours. It was a long drive, two hours. Uh, but even though it's a long drive, it offers some beautiful scenery uh, through the countryside with all the tall pine trees and the numbers of small farms and ranches. So there's plenty to see. So it kind of breaks up that drive. So it's, it doesn't seem so far, but two hours is a freaking long ways. It's not so long going up. But when you leave there at 9, 9.30, headed home, it's a long drive when you're going to be at church the next morning. Amen. And it seems like once we arrived in Winsboro, we uh, drove around the town looking for the many events that were mentioned that were going on there. We, and, and when I say we drove around the town of Winsboro, that didn't take very long. You know, beautiful little town, but just a very, very small town. And, and uh, after just a short drive through town there, we found the art center. That's where they were having this uh, event. And uh, where the, all the, the events were to be held. And there was a band. We walked in. There was a band already pr playing in there. And, uh, but after driving two hours, you're not ready to sit down right then and listen to a band play. So they had some of that going on. And, and uh, so we went through the town. We went walking through the town to locate all these other activities that they mentioned that was going to go on there. Which we never found. We didn't, uh, and everybody, Terry's saying, man, am I going to pay for this one? <laughs> you know, there were very, there were, there were many small businesses like they are in a lot of towns, different types of businesses. I think they had a boutique, whatever that is, and Terry and them went in there, but the rest of us stood outside and waited. And, uh, even going into these businesses, the business owners didn't even know what was going on. They, they didn't know anything about what was going on, so we knew right then, uh-oh, this, you know, our expectations may not be what we thought they were, right? So we never blamed you, though, Terry. <laughs> so as we walked through the town, it was a beautiful little town. It was a great experience just to walk around there and look at some of the old culture in that town and stuff like that. But after arriving back at the art center where we began we found out that all the activities would be held in this one arts building. Rather, they had a stage and everything was related to that. We did see one little boy, somebody saw one little boy roping a, one of those little calf things, false calves, yeah, but uh, we never saw what we were looking for. So needless to say, this is not what we expected when we headed out, amen? So we decided to drive over to the town of Pittsburgh, which is about... 30 minutes away, and visit the most recognizable landmark in Pittsburgh. It's a beautiful prayer tower, and it has four large stained glass windows on each side of the tower, and when you're inside and the sun's shining through the windows, man, it just brings those images to life. You know, Bo Pilgrim, Pilgrim's Pride's one of the, probably the largest business that employs people out there, well, he donated all this to the city of uh, Pittsburgh there. So we got to visit that, and we I, I think we can say without a doubt, uh, it was everything we expected from something like that. It had, uh, it had these, these four bells in the tower that uh, came from France, and that they would chime an old hymn 
every hour when they went off, you know. So it, it was, it was a, a, a great thing to see. We didn't get to listen to the bells because we were in between the times. But they also had uh, Jesus, a statue of Jesus washing Peter's feet out front, which was, you know, just great. Uh, they had water fountains and, and stuff that flowed. And it was just a peaceful place. Great, great place to go if you just want to have a prayer one-on-one. -on -one. Man, it was, it was everything we expected, would you not say? So we decided before we drive back to Winsboro, we'd locate a place to eat lunch in Winsboro, I mean in uh, Pittsburgh, because it's a little bigger town. We thought they'd have a good place to eat. So we located a little country cafe. Now, Terry was looking for the cafe, and we told her right then, just because this all went down, we trust you, Terry. So <laughs> whatever you find here. So we went to this little country cafe that looked appealing, and after eating lunch, uh, we were able to say it was better than we expected. Amen. And finally, after our drive back for the first of the two concerts we were going to hear, and after listening to the poetry and the music, it's poetry, not poetry. I'm sorry. We were up there where the chickens were. I guess I got confused. <laughs> but as we listened to all this throughout the evening, we all agreed that the concert entertainers that were there that brought the poetry and the music was everything we expected. So, you know, our lives follow expectations because expectation is a form of faith. So naturally, when we sit out to do something, we have an expectation on what it's going to look like, what it's going to be, how it's going to work, the whole deal. And it doesn't always work out that way. We have hope that motivates us. And expectation is the next step which prepares us for what we believe will happen in our lives or in a situation. And our entire lives are ordered around what we expect to receive. Think about that. What you expect to receive. Expectation defined is the act or state of looking forward to an event that is about to happen. That which is expected or looked for, the prospect of the future, Grounds upon which something excellent is expected to happen or prospect of anything good to come. Isaiah chapter 55, verse 8. We're going to open our Bibles there first this morning, if you join me. Isaiah chapter 55, unit verse 8. And before I go into the scripture, I want you to know, last night, <clears throat> before I got home, I had my message all prepared. God had lined it up all prepared. I was ready to go, right? All I got to do is put it down on paper. I'm good to go. We got home at 1130. Man, I'm tired. But I've, I know I got it in my head, and I'm ready to put this together. But then about 330 this morning, God came calling. I said, you know, I don't really like that one. I said, What? No, that's not the one you need to do tomorrow. I go, wait a minute, hold on. I'm going to argue with God, saying this isn't the right deal. You need, to, you need to carry this a different direction. And that's how I got here. If I, if I screw this up and get lost, it's, it's uh, because I didn't do it right. But uh, I had to go with what God told me to do. So that's why we're doing this. Isaiah chapter 55, verse 8. For my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are your ways my ways, declared the Lord. So no matter what we expect, God's in control. Isn't it amazing how we allow our expectations about different things and situations control our emotions of highs and lows in our lives? What we expect when we go to do something, visit with somebody or whatever, we allow what we expect to control whether we're at a high or low in our life by the outcome of that expectation. If you can remember as a child how you were the night before Christmas or your birthday, you were excited, some of you I'm sure, and filled with anticipation. You were probably so excited that you couldn't hardly contain yourself. You most likely had trouble falling asleep. 
and felt like your heart was running a hundred miles a second, excited. You not wait, could not wait until you were able to open those presents and see what you've gotten. Now, you probably had some expectations, and they could have been good or bad, but the thing is, you were excited about it. You got excited because what you expected was going to be great, and believe that. And, you know, we even expect people. We expect things on people. We expect, expect people to behave and act and live their lives as we would expect them to do, right? We do that. We expect that out of them. And do we get disappointed a lot? Amen. And we will. Because what we expect of others didn't always work out. Because that's not what they expect. So we have a, two, a two-way street there. And sometimes it's hard to digest. Sometimes our expectations for something or someone are set so high that we have this huge disappointment when our expectations are not met. Anybody ever been there? Amen. Some people have the mindset to expect something good in every situation. That's their mindset. No matter what I'm going to go do, no matter what it's going to be, and that's my wife, we're going to expect good things. It's going to be a good thing, right? And then you have the others that expect something bad in every situation. Oh, man, this is going to be a mess. I don't know why we're going. I don't expect anything out of this, or I don't expect anything out of that person. So it's always negative. And our expectations is our God-given ability to make a demand on our future. We can demand anything on our future. And our expectations are crucial to our success. We need to expect good things. Amen? If we're going to be successful. We do need to expect good things to come into our lives. But we must all learn to be Expect it, but also learn to have the right expectations in our lives. Because sometimes that's not the way it works. There's a saying that expectations is the breeding ground for miracles. Amen. Amen. If you expect a miracle, then get ready. Those miracles will show up. God's timing, not ours. Remember that. And if we want something good to happen in our lives, we must expect for that thing to actually happen. Don't go, well, maybe. Maybe doesn't work. Maybe doesn't work. That means you're negative, right? Maybe doesn't work. You got to expect that it's going to happen. And it's going to be good. It's sad to say that uh, today, some people go to church just to go to church. They attend having no sense of expectation or desire to feel God. They just go to church to go to church. They walk out of church exactly how they came in. Because of no exception for anything different to happen to them while they're there. People really have that attitude. They don't expect anything except they walk in to hear the band, listen to me talk. You know, say what I got to say and go home. I did my duty. I showed up today. I listened to that preacher. Even though I didn't really feel God, we'll always say, did you come to feel good or did you come to feel God? Right? If you came to feel good, hey, I don't know that I can do that for you. Because I have people tell me every day, hey, you're stepping on my toes. No, God's stepping on your toes. So if you came to feel good and you're getting your toes stepped on, and it's not a real good feeling, that means, hey, you got to change something in your life. Amen? Maybe your expectation wasn't what it should have been. I hope you came to feel God today. 2 Timothy, Timothy chapter 3 verse 5 refers to this as having a form of godliness but denying its power. You know, we, we have a form. We have a belief in God, but we really don't have that strong belief in his power. To meet our expectations are the things we expect in our lives. This is where people will, they'll say this. Well, I have faith. I have faith. But we've got to understand that faith and expectations are not the same thing. They're two different things. Although they're closely related, and you, we can say that, faith and expectations are distinctively different in the way you can have faith 
without expectation. But you can't have expectations without faith. Many believe that the Bible is true. People go, yeah, I believe the Bible is true. They have faith in the promises of the Bible and believe scriptures like this one, like Isaiah chapter 53, verse 5. Join me there. Isaiah chapter 53, verse 5. It says, But he, he was pierced for our transgressions, he was crushed for our inequities. The punishment that brought us peace was on him, and by his wounds we are healed. I'll pick up on the last words by his wounds we are healed. They believe it's a provision of the word that God heals. They believe that part, but they don't expect healing to take place in their own lives. God tells us that we're healed by faith. But do we expect it? No. Do we believe it? No. So you see the difference in between your expectations and faith. You've got to expect to be healed, but you've got to have the faith you're going to. You know, it's not just one way. Our expectations should also be realistic. And not a unrealistic hope of things or possessions to come into our lives. Because there are people that that way also. Say, man, I prayed for that, that million dollars. I prayed to win that lottery. It didn't happen. I guess they can expect to win the lottery. But it's still God's provision. Amen? And I'm sure many of us have our own expectations of God. Each one of us do. It's probably separate from somebody else's. But do we know what God's expectations of us are? Do we understand what God expects out of us? And we have all kinds of expectations for Him. Remember, you can have faith without exception, but you can't have exceptions without faith. So understand that faith has to come first before expectations can exist. You've got to have faith first. And if you don't believe that it's the will of God for you to be healed, to be delivered, to prosper, to live a life abundantly, then it's highly, highly doubtful that you'll expect to be healed, to be delivered, to prosper, or to live life abundantly. If you have faith, then you need to believe it. If you believe in God's word, you need to believe it and get ready. You need to expect it. Amen? Because expectations is built on faith. But faith doesn't imply expectations is there. But we've got to hang on to the faith first. Our faith comes first. When you read God's word, you first decide... To believe that it's God's truth. You have to decide. You have a choice. When you first read God's word, then you have to believe it if it's the truth or not. The next thing that has to be done is you have to look at your expectations. Do you really expect what you read in the Bible to happen in your life? Oh, man, that's tough. Do I really believe that? You know, people say all the time, man, I can't believe that you believe all those stories in the Bible. It's God's inspired word. I believe everything in the Bible. There's no question about it. No question about it. Like old Jerry Clark, when he's talking about his, one of his relatives being on a plane. First time he ever flew, and he's really nervous about it, and he's holding his Bible. And some guy asked him, said, man, are you one of them Bible thumpers? He goes, no, I ain't a Bible thumper. I read it. And I believe it. He said, you can't tell me you believe all them stories in that Bible. He goes, I believe everything God put in there. He said, well, you can't tell me you believe that Jonah spent three days in a big fish. He said, it's in the Bible. I read it and I believe it. He said, we ain't ever going to know. He said, when I get to heaven, I'm going to ask Jonah. He said, well, what if Jonah ain't there? He said, then you ask him. <laughs> Amen. Amen. What do you believe?
Hebrews chapter 11, verse 1. Hebrews chapter 11, verse 1. Now faith is confidence in what we hope for and assurance of what we do not see. This is what the ancients were commended for. By faith we understand that the universe was formed at God's command so that what is seen was not made of what was visible. Okay, we got to have faith. We have God, you know, Jesus, we can't touch him. We can, but we can't in human flesh, right? We don't see him visibly. Some people hear from him. Some of us don't. But it's not tangible. We talked about that. It's not tangible. So things that aren't tangible, we have a hard time believing in. But if God's book is the inspired word of God, and we're truly looking for expectations in our lives to come true, don't we expect God to do the things he told us he'd do? Within reason, right? Always within reason. This morning, I encourage each of you to choose to expect something good to happen in every situation and with everyone. And if it doesn't, don't let that expectation change your excitement on what's to come. Because that happens from time to time. And we don't get our way. I guess that's a better way to put it. We didn't get our way or it didn't work out the way we were expecting it to. So why should we have move forward? Well, if you look at life that way, you'll be looking backwards the whole time. Be looking in that rearview mirror. Keep looking out the windshield. Take that rearview mirror off. Always look forward. Hebrews 11, chapter 6. We're going to close right here this morning. We have the Lord's Supper today. So if you'll join me, our closing scripture, I'd like for you to look at it as we look at it together. Hebrews chapter 11, verse 6. And without faith, it is impossible to please him. For whoever would draw near to God must believe that he exists and that he rewards those who seek him. Remember the greatest command. Expect to love one another. And love your neighbor like yourself. You know, as long as we expect good things out of everyone and out of everything we go into with a positive attitude, because expectations can fall over on attitudes, go into every situation in that way, expecting good things. You know, we give Terry a hard time. <laughs> What'd you get us into? But after the whole deal was over and done, and she stayed positive, we had a great time. We got to see a great concert, a bunch of great guys to sing, and they, like I say, it became everything we expected it to be. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Father God, we come to you this morning. Father, we're just thankful for the blessings you uh, provide and the favor you pour out on us here at your church and your church house. Father, we thank you for the... Uh, opportunity that you allow us to have those expectations in our lives but father we thank you most of all for the promises of the things to come in our lives that we might expect because of your word father i pray you be with us uh, throughout the day father within the event we have this afternoon father uh, let us all discern what's real and what's not real in our halloween program and father our fall festival so father be with us. Keep us safe. Let us keep our expectations high in everything that you provide for us that we might seek you and pray to you for that will in our lives. Father, we love you. We praise you. We pray everything we did this morning, uplifting, glorifying, and pleasing to you. We ask this in Jesus' holy and precious name. Amen.